All right guys, so I'm here today at Jack's Bicycle Shop and I'm gonna be opening up some new stuff I just got in the mail today. So, let's do it. All right, so in the first box is the Crank Brothers Stamp 7 pedals. And these ones for me, I'm size eight, so I got size small. But we're gonna be putting these on the bike today. So the second box. Alright, so finally, finally, I got my hands on a pair of brand new 510 shoes. I decided to get some that matched my bike. See? Alright guys, so this is what happened. I have been riding the exact same pair of pedals and shoes for my whole time that I've ever mountain biked. I've been using the Race Face Chester pedals. As you can see, they're highly, highly worn. I've been using the 510 canvas version of their riding shoes, and these are canvas as well. I really like the canvas. They're just really firm, and they provide a lot more added stiffness, like all around your foot. Okay. So, since I've been riding the exact same stuff, I literally bought these, I believe, 14 months ago. So this is what a 510 shoe will potentially look like after 14 months of a lot of riding. Um, I even got holes in the bottom. I, I can literally stick my finger in and go out the top. These are just gone, they are toast. So, so first they're gonna be putting on the pedals. I'm gonna be talking to Jordan. He's gonna give us some um, information about pedals and what the type of pedals he uses. But we're gonna get out later and we're gonna ride and I'm gonna tell you what I think of basically completely upgrading my footwear and my pedals. Really, that's your contact points with your bike. So I've never ridden on anything like new. I've had these since I started and I've never had a pair of pedals that were like legitly like good pedals. Like the pedals that I bought were before were like 45 bucks. I believe these are like, they retail for like 150 or something like that. So I'm going towards a really big upgrade and I want to really see if it makes that big a difference. All right, so here's the then. And these are gonna be the now. So let's get them switched out. I am here with Jordan, and he's gonna be putting on my pedals, not because I can't do it, but because I just wanna be oh, sure, yeah. you know, they're put on right. I don't know. I just wanna get Jordan in the video today. It's, you know. All right, Jordan, tell somebody how to put on a pedal. Tell all those noobs out there. Well, these things are actually pretty rad. Um, first and foremost, pretty cool. These pedals come with a grease port on them. Um, so all too often, what we're seeing with pedals, especially nowadays, is the bearings inside here. Well, A, the pedals aren't getting maintenance, but the bearings in here are really small nowadays because all the pedals are really low profile. So the cool thing is with these guys, they have a little screw right here. That screw right there. Right here. You can use a standard grease gun with a needle fitting on it, and you can pump these things full of grease. I'm sure in the instructions it's going to tell you the length of period you want to do that, but it'll keep them running smoothly and help them not develop that sloppy play that sometimes we see with flat pedals. Dude, I didn't even know that. I got some sick pedals, dude. <laughs> cool. So first things first is on pedals, you're going to have a right and a left pedal. Sometimes they'll be marked, sometimes they won't. If you're ever unsure, one sure way you can always tell which one's left, which one's right, is which way the pedals actually, the thread on the pedal spindle rises. So if you see, those threads there are rising to the left. So this is the left threaded pedal, which is gonna go on the non-drive side of the bike. If you look at this pedal, the threads rise to the right. So this is gonna be the right-hand pedal or the drive side pedal. Before we install these, we're going to always get our grease. We always wanna grease the threads here. Sometimes, a lot of times, people bring their bikes in and their bike's making a creaking noise. They can't figure out where it's coming from. A lot of times, it's because their pedal threads right here aren't greased and you have a slight bit of movement in them and that's your creaking so all too often uh, noises in the bike come from ungreased pedal threads. <clears throat> I honestly did not think I was gonna learn anything today about pedals but I've just been proved wrong yet again so that's why I hang out with this guy you know I learn stuff you know it gets me going. So this is our right-handed pedal thread. So we're gonna put this on the drive side of the bike, on the right-hand side of the bike. Not every crank requires a washer, but if your cranks come with a washer, pedal washer here, you're just gonna slip that on like that. If you have crank boots, really cool, protect your crank. It's just gonna slide on like that. A few different pedal tools are out there, depending on what kind of pedals, like we saw with his old pedals here. You could access and thread them on either with a six millimeter Allen wrench to the back, or with these wrench flats that are on the spindle there, using this guy. Boom. Okay. So well, with these ones, obviously there's no wrench flats, so this tool will not work. 
we're going to be using an 8 millimeter Allen wrench. And it's very important when putting on pedals, you have leverage, okay? So this is a pretty big T-handled Allen wrench. You don't want to use, you know, sometimes you get these really small Allen wrenches. You can't get the leverage with those. And what happens if you don't get your pedals tight enough, A, they're going to loosen up, they're going to start moving back and forth, and you can end up ovalizing your crank arm and destroying your threads inside there. The pedals should install and thread in quite easily. Okay. If you really have to crank these things on, you might be cross-threading the pedals, which is a bad thing. And by cross-threading the pedals, you're going to be damaging more than likely, probably not the pedals themselves, but usually more your more expensive part, the crank arm and the threads inside here. And I'm going to put myself out there real quick. I remember about four months ago, I did a long drive out to St. Louis Obispo and I got out of the car and I was trying to put my pedals back on because I put my bike in the car and I was like, my pedals won't go on. What the crap's wrong with my pedals? And lo and behold, I was putting my left on my right and I could have saved myself four minutes of stress. Usually what I do is I'm just gonna start the pedal in, put the Allen wrench through the back, and I'm just gonna slowly thread those guys in. And there should be a pretty defined stopping point. Then I'm gonna switch to the leverage side of the, of the Allen, the T-handled Allen wrench here. And I'm just gonna put a little bit more torque. They don't have to be super, super tight because Sometimes too tight and they're gonna be really difficult to get off. But again, enough little leverage. If you use a decent size Allen wrench, you'll have plenty of leverage to tighten down the pedal. You're good. So really important um, when you're going to install pedals, again, pay attention to um, right and left uh, specific pedal threads and then make sure they're going in straight so you're not cross threading them. Crank boot, pedal washer. And there you go, simple install. So Jeff was just telling me right here, this, this guy was just telling me that one thing that's good about having clipless pedals is that it's just one less thing to think about. Like if you're going through rock gardens, if you're like jumping, it, you know your feet, your foot is gonna be where it needs to be. So that's something for me to think about and something I might end up doing in the future. But um, I'm thinking I might, I'm gonna be trying SPDs probably. So we'll see, I'm gonna see what I'm gonna do. But right now I'm staying with flats because I feel safer. Jordan, give us a history lesson on clipless pedals. Ready to come to the school? <laughs> School's in. School, Teach us. School is in session. So, uh, we always get the question asked, uh, why is it called clipless for the pedals that you clip into? Back in the old days, um, if you guys remember, or rode bikes, depending on how old the viewers are here, you had a pedal that had a basket that came over your toe, and that was your toe clip or clip. When the whole clip-in feature design with the shoe, cleat, and snapping into a pedal came about, the toe clip got removed, hence clipless pedals came on it. So, there you go. Mind blown. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, we are out here and I'm going to be testing out my new shoes and new pedals. Boom. They're on there, freaking look sweet. Takes the bike up a notch for sure. All right guys, so totally we're gonna be checking out the new pedals today and we're gonna be putting on the new shoes right now. Let's get them going. There's this really cool trick I, that I learned in order to like put your shoes on easier and like quicker. Let me show you guys. Here we go. One, two. And that is how mountain bikers put on their shoes. You just use your mind, use your intuition, and it just goes. All right, so now that we've got the shoes on and everything ready to go, I'm waiting for my buddy to get here, Jason Gansky. We're gonna be riding today. Basically, I wanna tell you guys, cause I have had jacked up shoes for like the longest time and I have had the, like, the same old pedals. I really, now that I'm on high quality pedals, high quality flats and high quality shoes, like brand new, I wanna let you guys know like what, going from like down dirt to the bottom to like what it's like getting on brand new shoes. A lot of people say that it's almost not worth going clipless anymore because flats are just that good. I've heard that flats are so like sticky now with the shoes and how they grip that clipless it's almost like there's no point to it. It almost in a sense there's only downfalls in the sense that it maybe brings a little bit more danger you know. You can't bail off in certain sections but I don't know if I really believe that but I'm gonna see today. I have really good pedals on and I have really good shoes brand new brand new and I want to see if I think that they can compete with clipless pe pedals. And I wanna know what you guys think in the comments, so let me know as well. Say what's up, Jason. Hey, what's up, guys? <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go riding with Jason today. Jason actually rides clipless pedals, right, Jason? Yep. So Jason, can you tell me some reasons why you go clipless as opposed to flats? I go clipless, one, because of the cross country. The cross country, you're able to pull up and get a smoother pedal all the way through instead of you're standing all the way on one side and the standing all the way on the other. You can use both pedals evenly to help 
go forward. And then another is little rocks and stuff that you have to try and bunny hop over. Okay. I can just very easily pull the bike up, lift it up, set it on the other side. What are some cons to clipless pedals? Some cons to clipless pedals would be mainly downhill rides. Okay. So like some downhill rides you are going down and you feel the need to stick your foot out and put it on a rock and pull the bike up on the other side. It's a lot harder to do that. You can do that, but it takes quite a bit of uh, getting used to unclipping that pedal. And so that is one downside. So if you did downhill, would you think about going uh, flats? I've thought about it because of some of the enduro runs is a lot like that. You have to pull your foot out for a second. So I've definitely thought about it, but I just got so used to it. When now when I try and ride flats, I pull up and jump off the bike and the bike <laughs> goes flying out from under me. So I've, I've tried, I have a nice pair of flats at home. I just can't get used to them again. So that was some very good information. So thank you, Jason, for that. So we're gonna get out. We're gonna go be switching to the gimbal right now. We're gonna hopefully get out in the trails and test these new shoes and flats out. All right, so, all right guys, we're gonna follow Jason Gansky down. We're gonna watch him rehab back into action. Thank you, hold up. All right, I'm, I'm good now, I, I'm coming. Oh my gosh, I've never, so I just had a branch slap me in the eye, move my contact out of my eyelid. <laughs> and I was able to get it back in, but dang. Nice lines, dude. Took that way faster than me. Oh my gosh, how did he do that? Yeah, so far, I'm feeling, I just feel stiffer, which is always a good thing when you come to mountain bike riding. I have more grip. To maneuver the bike into corners. This feels great. I have more power to the pedal. I was too close. Branch knocked my shoe off. What happened? Yeah, me too. It's just been eating, that corner's getting eaten away. So I haven't been trusting it. Usually take that rock and jump it too. Yes, 
Sure. All right guys, so honestly, my feet did not get tired until probably 30 seconds ago. So I didn't start feeling the burn. So 30 seconds ago, that's improvement for sure in my feet getting like tired and cramped. Woo!